Mr. Crispin here once again and today we're going to be making a replacement one of these. Now this is nothing to do with my steam locomotive, this is totally separate but uh, basically this is a plastic thing, we'll call it an artifact because I'm not sure what the actual name of it is but I'm going to make one of these in aluminium. Uh, it should have a threaded stud in the back um, but that is broken out. So first off how to do it. Um, I'm going to start with the part this way around, so to speak. I'm going to face off, machine the OD, put the counter bore in, and then transfer the whole chuck across to the dividing head in the milling machine, and use uh, this little fly cutter I've made um, to cut these flutes down the side. I'll show you a close-up of this later, but um, once I've done that, I can put this chuck back on the lathe, part off, flip the piece round and uh, face off and drill and tap the hole in the back. So that's how I'm going to do it. Just before we start, a big thank you to Ron Cartwright who has sent me a complete set of Glenay's turning tools uh, that fit the Myford lathe and they're going to be using a couple of them in this video. So let's make a start. I'll use my uh, very nears today for the benefit of the camera. They're aiming for about 1310. So I've got quite a bit to come off. At these speeds and feeds, which is about 1100 RPM and 6 hour rev, uh, the max the motor can cope with is about a 30 thousand depth of cut. It starts to slow down a bit after that. And I said 1310 and 1319. So 9 thou to come off. I'll take that in one go. Nearly at the end of the finish pass now. One three ten I said, one three oh nine there. Some of these carbide tip tools, particularly like this one with a slightly negative rake and a uh, radius on the tip, prefer a heavier finishing cut to get a good finish. They like to be loaded up more uh, compared to say a high speed steel tool with a truly sharp edge. Um, so uh, I could have been a bit more careful with the size of finishing cut to achieve a bit better accuracy but in terms of surface finish a heavier cut sometimes is a bit more beneficial. So this is the bit it fits in and as you can see down at the bottom there there's only a small boss so there's really no need to make it as big as that. Um, so I'll just make it the minimum size required to allow that boss to go in. I'm just going to drill it out to about half an inch by an inch deep ultimately. Half an inch diameter that is. This is just three in one. So 
So over at the milling machine now I've put the dividing head on and uh, this is little vertex dividing head uh, 40 to 1 ratio with the normal plates around the side but on the front here is a direct dividing plate which uh, I nearly always use and that's basically got 24 holes and the little plunger at the top and uh, that just makes all the normal numbers much simpler to uh, divide by. For instance here I'm going to put eight grooves in so I'm just going to go around three holes or 45 degrees at a time. Uh, the other nice thing about this is it has the same spindle adapter as on the Myford lathe so I can just unscrew the forge jaw that I've just done the turning in and screw it straight on and it should be pretty accurate. I've already cleaned the threads but basically you've got a, a locating diameter and shoulder as well and that just screws on so having now swapped the chuck over we better check uh, see what the run out and alignment is like when I say alignment I mean how parallel it is to the bed and whether it runs parallel to the axis of the bed I don't know if you can see that on camera, but it's about two thumb, which I think uh, will be fine for this. I could readjust these jaws to centralise it further, but that'll be okay. And I can check along, and there's hardly anything in that axis. Finally, a check this way. There's about a sow over the length of it, so that's absolutely fine. I've ground a fly cutter up to match the slots in uh, these grooves, and I'm now going to set the middle of the cutter with the centre of the work. So, before I start cutting, I need to set the tip of this tool onto the centre line of the work, and uh, if I was using a horizontal piece of high speed steel with an accurately ground form on the end I could use the top of the tool as a datum but uh, this slopes down and I've manually uh, or hand ground that form on the end so my best bet will be to use a scribing block and um, what I've done is I've gone into the bore with it and set the very tip of the scribing block into the middle of the drilled hole so at the end of the drilled hole obviously there's a cone and I've set the centre of the cone to the centre of the scribing block. Now what I'm going to do is bring this over here and uh, adjust the Z height on the milling machine until the tip of there lines up with the centre of the tool. I've set the Z height, I've set the dividing head to zero and I've locked it. Uh, I'm going to come in and touch on and then feed in 70 thousandths and I'm going to take all the cuts at 70 thousandths and then uh, there'll be a few more finishing passes I expect. Now all the way back out and then rotate. And 
so on. I'm just taking a very light finishing pass now using 3-in-1 as a lubricant and uh, I'll now show you how I work out what depth of finishing cut to take. So how to work out what size finishing cut to take. First of all, how do you measure the depth of these? And the easiest way I find to do it is to use a dowel. And uh, a dowel that will sit in each side and uh, protrude slightly past the face and come into contact with the two flats. I don't want to come into contact with the radius. I want to sit on the two flats and come far enough out so that I can use a micrometer to measure between them, but not too far out that the roller sits on the corners. So when I've got two rollers of the right size, two mil worked in this case, um, I'm able to get a measurement over the outsides. Now when I'm copying something, such as this plastic bit, it's very easy to work out what to do because all I have to do is put the rollers into the plastic one, measure this, then put the rollers into the aluminium one, and measure this, and uh, whatever the difference is tells me how much there is to come off. And of course, because we're working on two sides, we have to divide it by two. So let's say we measure on the plastic one and get two inches or 50 millimetres. And then let's say I measure the aluminium one and this measurement comes to 50.1 millimetres. Well, that's 0.1 millimetres oversize, so I put 0.05 of a mil cut on. And by the time I've been all the way around the periphery with the fly cutter, that should have brought this overall dimension 0.1 in, achieving the 50 millimetres to match the plastic one. So that's relatively straightforward, it's just a case of making them match. But what happens if you're working to a drawing and you haven't got one to copy? So, taking a squashed up version of the part, we need to imagine how it would be dimensioned. So I'm going to draw a centre line in and we're going to say that it's dimensioned from the datum being the centre to the theoretical depth of the V as 20 millimetres. And then we'll also say that this angle is an included angle of 30 degrees so therefore, half of that would be 15. So what can we do to measure it? Well, we need to bring our rollers back in. And let's say we use a 2mm roller. Now, so we know a few facts about this area. One of them is that the radius of this roller is 1mm. And another fact we know is that from this face the line to the centre of the circle will be at 90 degrees and we know that will be one mil long so we've got the radius drawn in one millimetre we know that that's going to sit at 90 degrees to this face and we know that this angle is 15 degrees so if you draw that as a triangle we've got a right angle triangle with a 15 degree angle here and a 1 millimeter length there. Now I've already done the trigonometry and that gives us a hypotenuse of 3.864 millimeters which in effect is the distance from there to there. So if you follow me we've got that distance, we know that, plus the 20 mil, which gives us 
six, four. And that number is from the centre of the roller to the centre of the part. So we know that double that number is going to be the centre of this roller to the centre of this roller. And then all we need to do is add the extra bit on for the radius. One mil, one mil here, one mil here, so two mil. So if I double that distance and then add two on for the extra radii, we get 49.728. And therefore, if I'm using 2mm rollers, when the part is at finished size, that is the number I should get when measuring from there to there. And so hopefully, when I measure my part initially, I get a bigger number than that. And then, using the method I explained on the previous uh, diagram, I can calculate what size finishing cut to take to achieve that finished size. So, watch this another 20 times if uh, that didn't make sense, but that's how I would work out uh, groove depth. Right, so I've been to the grinder and I've ground what is effectively a chamfering tool. And I'm going to use that to break all these edges and then I'm going to set the dividing head round at an angle and produce all those lead-ins. So having been round all the slots, I've now got a light break edge on the uh, two sharper edges. I'm now going to produce a lead-in, hopefully very similar to this one here. I've got the dividing head round at 10 degrees now. And right, we're back in the lathe, I've screwed the chuck on. I've enlarged the chamfer here and I've given it a bit of a polish up with some scotch bright. so now I'm going to part it off. This is just a high speed steel parting blade that was supplied with this uh, quick change tool post because it seems to cut nicely. And there we are. Now just to drill and tap a hole in the back end. So now just to drill and tap a hole. I'll do that off camera and show you when I'm done. So there is the finished artifact. I'm very pleased with how it's come out and I've done a few operations I've not done in a while. After I drilled and tapped the hole in the aluminium I locked tight the stud in. And as you can see that fits in there like that and it can go in a range of different positions. I hope you found that interesting. Thanks for watching and see you on the next video.